So Alessandro, uh, thank you so much for joining us in our uh, Audi while we drive around uh, Amsterdam for our little car interviews. Um, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about you know who you are and your maybe some yeah. of your background? Yeah, of course. Uh, thanks. It's my first car interview, so there's yeah, a fit yeah, for everything. Yeah, right. Um, I'm Italian and I'm from the south of Italy and I moved to Amsterdam 20 years ago to get my PhD in chemistry of all things. Of course. So uh, I have a you. background in science <laughs> and I'm a big science nerd. Uh -huh. And uh, I've also been around open source for a long time. I was part of the Linux user group in my own town. Okay. And uh, been doing, uh, I remember installing Linux uh, in 1999, those kind of things. Then I moved and I finished my PhD and then I reinvent myself as a you know, IT professional. Okay, mm, all right. And never since, I never looked back. Uh, yeah. It was a great decision. Right. And uh, I'm here now and since 10 years really I've been organizing tech communities, meetups mostly okay. in Amsterdam. Uh, started with DevOps days uh -huh. 10 years ago, you yeah. know, and DevOps wasn't <laughs> Quite so well known. No, it was the, the a year after the first uh, DevOps days in Ghent. Yeah, and and then I quite like it. Like it's my thing. Mm -hmm. The community is really what drives me. Like seeing people uh, connecting to each other, uh, being happy. Uh, it was absolutely my my first uh, my, the thing that I do best and I think that I enjoy the most. Yeah. And then from there I move on to different communities. I did OpenStack for a while, mm -hmm. uh, joined Red Hat, and then uh, eventually I joined the, I founded the Kubernetes Meetup in Amsterdam. Okay. And that's where I am now. I, cool. I enjoy it so much that I can, I don't want to stop. So I have to ask, um, because uh, I'll tell you why in a minute, but what kind of chemistry were you doing? So I was a synthetic and spectroscopy. Okay. Yeah, it was a... My, my stepfather was organic chemistry yeah. and did mostly uh, fMRI and, you know, spectroscopy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's why yeah, I had to ask. It's um, fascinating. I was doing ultra fast laser spectroscopy. So I oh, spent okay. most of four years in a dark room with mirrors and lasers. <laughs> and really bright lights. <laughs> and, uh, and I also like, I mean, now I like a lot techno music, so oh, I'm well, also so in a dark same, room right? with yeah, lasers. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's, uh, oh, that's funny. Um, uh, also about DevOps days, it's amusing um, because uh, uh, I don't I, I thought it was like 10 years ago, but maybe it was more recent than that because it, it wasn't one of the earliest, earliest, but I actually um, co-founded the DevOps days in Boston. Yes. Uh, so, uh, but it was, uh, yeah, it was... It, Interesting. Yeah. It was the the first embryo of a community of conferences. Yeah. Right? So yeah. united by the fact that we love the technology. Right. But we love even more to be together. Well, and right? what I loved about what DevOps Days really brought to the table that nobody else had really done was like a templating. You know, here here is a template for yeah. running your conference. Yeah. You know, here's all the things you need. You need somebody doing vendor stuff. Here's how to build the website. Here's some promotion. For, it was just it was just so well organized. Yeah. Um, and I was so impressed. You gotta um, give it to Patrick Debois and yeah, the very yeah. first uh, you know group of uh, DevOps uh, pioneers right. to, to start right. this whole thing. It's it's amazing. It's still going on. Yeah. I did it for three four years. Yeah. I did I the same. And it over yeah. because yeah. you know it's. Uh, I, pre every, I prefer the air meritus title to uh, any sort of conference I start, you know, because <laughs> they're a lot of work. Yeah, we're still friends with these guys. I mean, they're amazing. They, they help us a lot. Yeah. They started with Kubernetes Community Days in Amsterdam. Uh -huh. So it's like, it's a, you know, Amsterdam, the Netherlands is 18 million people. Uh -huh. We know each other. I mean, it's just a, just living in a big village. Right? Oh, so interesting. That's cool. You see the same yeah. people all over the place, huh. and uh, is I, it I is it really neighborhoody or like why why does that happen? Quite quite neighborhood. Uh. There are a few big events and big yeah. meetups, so, so it's nice. It's yeah. like being part of a of a community, of right. a family, right. right? So you see the same people. You start to establish bonds right so right. it's uh, it's good it's a very compact country and in the end it's um, it's very technological intensive yeah like uh, all com all big companies they are doing very cool interesting stuff that's why kubernetes and cloud native is so popular here because oh, it's, interesting. Uh, yeah big communities of developers uh -huh. Uh, big companies investing, so it's uh, it's a lovely place. Yeah, it's actually it's funny. I was just having a conversation with a prospective student too, because I teach mm -hmm. at uh, Boston University now, um, and uh, you know Boston University thirty thousand ish students, mm -hmm. and I was commenting on how how weird it is because it really does like they do a really good job of feel of making it feel like it's not 
anywhere near that big. It has all these like mm -hmm. sub communities and clubs and sports and all stuff. And, and you really can find a group of people to like hang out with, which I, I like, I'm, I'm very impressed with doing that at, you know, like a 30,000 yeah. scale. Um, and I find that, you know, it's a difficult thing to pull off. Um, so it's, it's always kind of cool when you can find it anywhere. That, that's why I think Kubecon, 10,000 people, mm -hmm. I think we, we reach, you know, the ceiling. That's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, let's, yeah. let's not grow more than this. <laughs> right. right? So, right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a big conference. Um, so what was the thing that you were really hoping to see or what did you hear about or, uh, you know, this, this so, particular conference that was super uh, interesting? So this was a cathartic moment, right? Mm -hmm. So in 2020, Kubecon was supposed to come to Amsterdam, right? So oh, for right, me it right. was, yeah. ah, finally yeah. I can be the chaperone, yeah. I can show people around. Yeah. I was so proud. Everybody was really, really excited about yeah. it. That was just a few weeks uh, before we, we had to close everything for, for, right. for COVID. So, and then for three years, we just waited. Right. So it was a, was a thing. And then, uh, and now it's finally happening. And it's, right. you know, when you have a dream, you, you really, uh, I think it's going to be like this. And then yeah. it's even better than you expect. Right. So, oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, no, I, I can totally see why that would be. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, I've really enjoyed it. Um, you know, I haven't, I haven't actually been to the conference very much, right. um, but, uh, you know, cause I've been driving around doing driving. interviews, <laughs> but, um, uh, but I'm hoping I'll have most of tomorrow free and maybe be able to go to some talks. Um, but, uh, it's been, you know, I, I really like this city. Um, it's funny. My, my biggest exposure was because, you know, a lot of, of a lot of flights cross through Amsterdam. Yep. Amsterdam also often has a lot of weather. Uh, so I got stuck here for three days um, because my flights got canceled, you know, and, but I was with uh, you know, like a colleague and, and it was great. I was like, you know, of all the places to get trapped for yeah, three yeah, days, you know, I was yeah, like, yeah, I'll right. take it. Um, so it is, yeah, it, I've enjoyed very, it a lot. The very nature of the Netherlands and Amsterdam is of one of trading. Mm -hmm. it's, it's not coincidental that uh, we have the biggest uh, internet exchange in Europe. Oh, interesting. So yeah, yeah all yeah. the, all the gaming servers, all the gaming company put their servers in Amsterdam uh -huh. because the latency is the lowest you can get. Right. Uh, and, uh, and that's what they do. They, they are at the center of a big trading routes and yeah. uh, and uh, you can tell. I mean, so these people they, they really know how to interact with foreigners, right? So I yeah. I hope everybody was feeling welcome here. There's a very simple. Uh, transportation, right? But in general, right. it's very, very easy to live. Yeah, I mean, uh, I city. I went last night, kind of last minute, to finally get a metro pass because uh, I just hadn't had a chance to get one yet. And I think it took me, you know, like 15 seconds to get a four-day yep. metro pass. Yeah. I was like set. Yeah. I was like, so, great, this is easy. Okay. Um, but it's interesting that you say that because um, you know, in India, Hyderabad is uh, also traditionally a big trading center, but it is now also a big tech hub. Yeah. And I wonder if there's kind of some sort of correlation they, there. They must, be, they must be. Yeah. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, I never really thought about it. Um, but uh, it's kind of, you know, interesting. Um, so uh, you're now at Solo, right? Yeah. And, yeah, uh, it was a big uh, how long? Change. Yeah, how long have you been there? Oh, just four months. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, okay. So um, after six years at Microsoft, yeah. which I absolutely love every okay. minute of it. Okay. Microsoft what were you doing at Microsoft? I was a software engineer, so... Okay. Oh, like, um, like inside engineering, like building stuff. Yeah, we yeah. were part of a team that is bit, it's more like a customer customer facing engineering. Oh, right? okay. So yeah. we were working with big customers and we were in big projects, so mm -hmm. really interesting. You see production yeah. workloads, you can really tell. Um, but on the other end, on the other side, we were also interacting with engineering a lot. Mm -hmm. I was there for six years, I've seen uh, AKS being created from nothing, uh, you know, yeah, or uh, yeah. the, the first container right. uh, platform on, on Azure. It was uh, it was uh, instructive. Uh, right. I learned a lot, and I'm, I'm glad I was there at that moment. Yeah, and it's a great culture, amazing people. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't left uh, because I didn't like it. I left because I I needed a new challenge. Right, and yeah. uh, I was really inspired by the leadership at yeah. Solo, the story, the, the the technical product fit was amazing that it's service mesh I think is what Kubernetes felt like a few years ago mm -hmm. was a yeah, lot of innovation yeah. they uh, strive to to provide the best value and uh, right the, the new cool things are happening there ABPF and and solo ticks all the box I mean and is always there when uh, when there's a our technical challenge to right to fix so that's uh, that's why I joined so yeah and it's nice to be in a 200 
ish organization. Right, you can right. talk to everybody. It's yeah, awesome. I really like uh, I like horizontal. startups. You know, um, it's actually funny that you brought up uh, about Microsoft. Um, we actually have two people that I've uh, kind of brought in to be instructors at uh, Boston University. Of, so some of our classes are focused around um, students doing software projects for like third parties. And for those classes, we try to get industry people to teach them. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but that kind of means it falls to me to kind of make sure they know things like how to grade and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, But two of them are from both from Microsoft. And it's been really neat that um, Microsoft actually um, encourages them to participate in like teaching at a university. They give them like time off and stuff. I yeah. thought it was a really cool it's, like feature. I had no it, idea. It's a place like that. Yeah. So uh, they, uh, they encourage you to contribute to open source. There's a mm -hmm. big open source program office or part of this uh, open source movement within Microsoft. Yeah. And you, it was, and it's, still, and it's not just a facade. It's really like a really, really understand. Yeah open source and they 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 know what is right maybe they don't do it all the time what is right because of course like uh, well, it's a slow moving company, humans right, right? It's so, huge. but they, they do understand they they get open source that's yeah. why i joined i mean I have, uh, people will were asking me questions because i'm i'm a hardcore open source enthusiast yeah. i'm a, a zealot right so right. for me open source is the way right, right. so and yeah, when well, i joined microsoft people were Wondering what got into me. What were you me. thinking? Yeah. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's um, I, I I cherish my time in Microsoft. Yeah. I hope maybe well, I'll be back. Who well, knows? I will say um, like I you know very suspicious of the move towards open source by Microsoft until I read um, Satya's uh, autobiography, mm -hmm. uh, and I was okay. like. Okay, you know, I, I think Makes they sense, get it. Right? Like, yeah. you know, it's like maybe the whole organization hasn't gotten there yet, but the CEO gets it, you yes. know, and and, then, uh, and it's going to, so they'll get there eventually. Yes. Uh, and so I was super impressed uh, by, you know, by not only kind of the book, but then stuff that he's kind of said and thought, you know, or whatever uh, since then has also been super interesting. Yeah. When, um, uh, when you have inspiring leadership, you also inspire to be a leader right, in right. your own way, yeah, you know? Yeah. So, uh, All right. So turning back to Solo. So sure. what is it you're doing for Solo? I'm a DevRel, so uh -huh. that's why also I joined because I, I've been doing informally yep. developer relations for yep. a long time. That's because it didn't exist until like 10 years ago, even though we all did it before that. Right. And then, you know, because I joined Red Hat actually as DevRel. That um, was not, so. no title. I mean, yeah. you just do it, right? Yeah. So right. You, you, you do your work in the community, you talk about it because you have passion for technology, right? Right, so, well, and there's no other way, like, unless you have kind of developers talking to other developers about, you know, how to consume the products or whatever, like, how else, you know, do you kind of drive the change that you want to see, yeah, you know? Yeah, so, um, uh, so, uh, so DevRel, um, and uh, do, are you focused on a particular set of Solos products, or are you kind uh, of... No, no, we... Do, we we mostly focus on the open source side. So oh, okay. Solo has the roots in open source. Right? Yeah, we, totally. We are yeah. Big contributors to Istio, but also yep. other eBPF and Cilium projects. So yeah. so that our my our role is to brand awareness and uh, helping uh, helping developers and platform engineers to understand the technology. Mm -hmm. It's it's uh, it's. Uh, um, you talk about it because you love it and you want other yeah. people to understand it. Right, and, right. And so they can get the benefit too. Yeah, yeah. so you make our technology easy to digest. Right. It's amazing, right? So, yeah. And when you see when people really get it because you explain it to them, yeah. that's the most amazing right, right. feeling in the world, right? So and uh, so that's what I do. It's, it's a lovely thing to do mm -hmm. because you also you have to have an engineering mindset because you have to talk to your internal engineers right. to tell them, hey, <laughs> well, you that, should. That's how I got out of DevRel is my, yes. my long running joke is uh, they got tired of me complaining and pulled me into engineering. Then, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, you so, complain twice. And, right. uh, <laughs> and now you have to fix yeah. it. I was like, oh, so uh, yeah. But I actually when I before I left Red Hat, I left engineering and I went to more like a DevRel role, but specifically around mm -hmm. service mesh. Uh, and K native and um, you know serverless etc because that's um, it's fascinating to me. I really like uh, you know event driven architectures and serverless functions and that whole realm and yeah. then service mesh is, is kind of the glue for all of that, right? It's uh, what I say now is my tagline. Mm. I'm on a mission to install a service mesh in every cluster yeah, yeah. because every cluster deserves a service mesh. <laughs> right, right. Because right. so. right. it'll be prettier. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. easier to manage. Right. And, and uh, it's a little price to pay for sure, but yeah, uh, yeah. 
the, the, the advantages outweigh the, the, the little RAM and CPU right. that you have to spend on it. Yeah, right? my, my, my biggest, uh, it, it, one of the things that's really hard when we're doing these uh, projects for, you know, these third parties with the student teams or whatever, is like the projects we're building many of the time are, are nowhere near sophisticated enough uh, to use a lot of these, you know, kind of newer things. But we're starting to build more stuff that's like, you know, able to leverage like at least like serverless functions. Yep. Um, and we're starting to get, you know, the students to get their heads wrapped around it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's just like, it's the right way to build things, yep. even though, you know, even though it's a very different way of building software than your traditional, you know, kind of serial execution. Yeah, um, and, uh, but, you know, you would not think to run a cluster without role-based access control today, right? Right, right. There was a time when yeah. it was like add-on or yeah, something yeah. special. Right. And I think eventually service mesh will be the default add-on. Yeah. The, the thing yeah. that you run because you, yeah. you, you cannot live without this very important things like, right. like security and uh, and observability right so, i think that's uh, i think that's we're still it's still kind of not easy enough in a sure. sense like you like, know it's like still airbag. right right it's not exactly easy, exactly but. right and uh but i i completely agree with you it's that um it's it's kind of where it's going although the flip side of that some of the other things that have been going on like that solo is involved with among others but like uh ebpf uh mm -hmm. i also think yep. is super interesting um especially um we were talking the other day about kind of low level control plane manipulation yeah. using ebpf really neat you know and i know solo is a big contributor we, there we too. do we do we do we do we again like uh, we make abff a bit easier to mm -hmm. consume and to use and to produce so we have a project called bumblebee it's a wrapper around mm -hmm. the, the, the bpf and uh, and it helps you get started because it's all about that right yeah. so if you get yeah. more developers on board Smart developers, they just don't have the time to go through the old documentation. They, yeah. you, you give them the tools, you know, the, literally the, the tools to build and uh, package, distribute eBPF programs. You got more people, more eyes, and right. more uh, more right. hands on uh, on deck, and uh, the the thing will be will, will be faster adopted. That's uh, that's the right. point. Right. So it's a uh, it's interesting now. Applications are getting more complex. This application networking we, we talk about a lot, mm -hmm. and of course you need more control and more security. And the BPF is a technology that can give you that. So. Right. Right. Um, so what do you, so, you know, we call this the KBE insider show. Um, and so the idea of it is like, you know, what, are what are people who are kind of in the community or whatever see as the next big, interesting thing? So like, what do you think is going to, you know, what, what are you most looking forward to six from months from now, a year from now, um, aside from a service mesh in every yeah. cluster? And I guess people answer AI and GPT a yeah. lot. Yeah. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that. Okay. All right. I'm, yeah. uh, I'm a ludist uh -huh. in, that, in that sense. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm for a moratorium on uh, on uh, <laughs> lang large language models, but that's another story. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, definitely. See, there is a, this enthusiasm doesn't seem to abide. You know, there's always there's even more people coming to into the the fold of uh, cloud native. Right. And I think definitely we need more education and more um, more training. Right. right? So there's right. it's a, this was a big problem in OpenStack. There were not enough people that understood the project. Oh yeah. The, the, the yeah. limiting factor is always the, um, the 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 people, right? So the, yeah. the, the, the the education. So I think that would be, and it's great that you, what you're doing, teaching students. Yeah. It's a it's a crucial part of uh, growing a, a good community. Well, and, community. and I mean, it, and it's it, it was it's so hard, right? Because you know you really are changing how you have to think about your software like and and i think that's you know it like i said it you know using let's you know loosely call it why does that happen yeah um, oh it's the traffic information oh okay yes, it's telling you that yeah we are we are stopping line oh yeah, all right it's yeah, giving yeah. you the information okay. that you right, already have right. I, yeah i can yeah, tell, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> right um but so, uh, you know, when you, you know, when you're taught to program or you're doing, you know, kind of traditional applications, you know, everything is very serial. It's very, you know, kind of, you know, point A to point B. Mm -hmm. And when you start introducing things like, you know, events or like serverless functions or, um, you know, like uh, kind of like a service mesh, especially if you have like service meshes that, uh, 
uh, crisscross clusters. Um, like it's very hard to have a sense of what's going to happen next in your code. Yeah, yeah. And people find that very difficult to wrap their head around. And I think that's what makes the education for it so challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. When I, I, we were doing DevOps and, and we were thinking, well, we, we like this stuff, right? So mm -hmm. we, we are the 1% of the IT engineers right. around the world, right? So, and it's the people that, you know, they, they work nine to five and then right. they go home and yeah. we, we need to call for them because these are yeah. the people that we need to make it easy for, right? So, so just the, make it just easy to consume. It's not easy. Uh, we don't have a magic wand to just make Kubernetes uh, disappear and right. uh, be there and for everybody. Just work. Yeah. But it will be it will be big in the in the future. So and of course, like uh, I just gave a talk about GitOps, and it's definitely mm -hmm. a different way to think about the, the right. same thing. Right. Which is always the same. You know, application needs to be deployed. Right? Yeah. But that's uh, how you do it that matters now. So. Right. Right. And and I think people kind of understanding that you know, I mean, I, a lot of it is building intolerance for you know, kind of change. Right. You know, yeah. either because you know somebody changes teams or you know or you know, whatever, like we just want to make sure that there's, um, you know, we need more automation. We need more, you know, computers doing the work that doesn't really need humans. Um, we just have to tell it how to do it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, but that's a very different like experience, you know, the, what they say, like declarative versus imperative. It's just straight up. I think a lot of people find very confusing. Yeah. But then, you know, we, we do this automation thing because we want people to focus more on the application, right? So, mm -hmm. but then we Oops, we gotta sorry. do it. Enough right. enough automation. Now it's time to, you know, focus more on the application side of things. So, yeah. so sometimes it's just uh, when is automation too much? That's, uh, yeah. that's, yeah. that's the point. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 that one's also hard, right? It's like you know, do you set it all up at the beginning, right, and and make this huge investment in in kind of setting up all the automation, and then discover that oh, it's probably invariably going to be wrong somehow. Yeah. Uh, you know, and trying to find. I think that's kind of where the experience comes in is like trying to find that happy medium between enough automation and enough, uh, you know, but not too much because you, you know, you know, there's going to be change uh, is it's a very hard balance. Maybe to find. engineers should be more aware of the total cost of ownership. Of right. Software, right. Right. So yeah. which means, yes, OK, it's easy to set up, to set up but if you have to spend a lot of time maintaining it, Mm -hmm. then you may be better off with something a bit more complex in the beginning. Right, the, right. Where right. it requires less maintenance. Right. Um, and, you know, it's, but it's, it's hard, uh, I think, to, uh, to find that balance, uh, you yeah, know, kind of either uh, direction. It's, yeah. Yeah. But it's fun. I think yeah, it's, uh, yeah. I like it too. it's <laughs> one of the fun side of right. this job, right? So, well, one yeah. of the ways I used to convince people about, um, you know, kind of doing, you know, things a little bit more properly, um, you know, uh, from GitOps to, you you know, event driven or whatever. It's like, hey, just keep in mind, right? Yes, there's some grunt work here that you have to do to set all this stuff up. But what it's going to give you is more time to write the fun code. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. I think that's where, like, that's that's the sell. You know, the the, the emoji and the cut memes <laughs> and uh, all this stuff. <laughs> exactly. right? uh, it's so much time now. Right. No, but it's. Um, I always ask myself, do I want to be woken up at three o'clock at right. night to fix right. this? Yeah. Or no, uh, never. I'd rather sleep. You know? <laughs> yeah. Right. So. Uh, it's always, yeah, that's I, that's one of, the, of my kind of old jokes about DevOps is, uh, you know, when we had the true advent of DevOps kind of coming in, you know, I was kind of like, well, you know, as a developer, I'm not sure I like this whole DevOps idea because the throwing it over the wall and then somebody else gets woken up, I'm fine with that, yeah. you know? But if I have to get woken up, that means yeah. I have to work on code What about better. no yeah. one needs to wake right, up, right? right. right? So yeah. what about like, a, we, we work together, so, <laughs> so software works or self-healing or right. self-correcting yeah. and, uh, and then we, we can all uh, enjoy our time. Yeah, because deep is very important, by the way, I yeah, realize yeah. that uh, and uh, maybe we don't get much sleep in this right. job, right? So uh, Yeah. Uh, well, the other part too is, um, you know, it's kind of the, you know, you don't hear this that much anymore, but like um, internet gremlins, um, you know, where just there's gremlins on the internet who go around and break your stuff 
we don't know who they are or what they are or why they happen, you know, but I think um, they're often inexplicable, unrepeatable. Um, and so if you're kind of building your systems to tolerate the simple issues, you also get to some of those as well. And yep. you, you know, there's less internet gremlins waking you up in the middle of the night too, yep. um, which I, is huge. I was at, I was lucky enough, I was at Tom Limoncelli lecture once mm -hmm. and he, he taught this story like, okay, you, that's why you have to do the art things more often mm -hmm. and more, more because the first time you're gonna fail so much. Yeah. You're gonna have like 20 pages full of bugs. Yeah. But the second time you're gonna have 10 pages <laughs> right, and then right. a bit a bit less. You're never gonna go away, but the, the art things has to be done first yeah. and foremost. So it's a great lesson. It's good for life as well, but uh, right, especially right. good for uh, IT infrastructure and development. I uh, I still remember one of my uh, one of my professors in college uh, told us as a class right that uh, once we became real professionals, we would stop having syntax errors in our code. And I was like, um, no, still still have them all the time. <laughs> I uh, kinda, uh... Yeah, it's pretty funny. I was like, no, you don't ever stop writing bugs. You know, it's just. It's kind of like you just get used to it and you get really good at fixing them fast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, but you don't ever actually get rid of them. That's no. why GitHub Copilot is great, of course, <laughs> yeah. this time, but uh, that you don't get it because somebody is fixing it for you. Right, right. Um, yeah, I totally hear you. Uh, so, um, what else, you know, what else do you see as next? What, what other interesting things do you see on the horizon? Uh, well, definitely we see the rise of APIs so mm -hmm. um, and cloud native APIs gateways so yeah. that's a big thing for us uh -huh. we think we believe that uh, the world is runs on API mm -hmm. and uh, it's time to tame the complexity and, and put them under better control and better um, better uh, support and better yeah. and I think cloud native gateway so Kubernetes is expanding also into including also the, the API gateway. So this is one thing we, we really care about, uh, mm -hmm. making the developer experience better and uh, having good self-describing APIs, I think it uh, makes your professional life much easier for a developer. So that this is what we, we are investing as well. Yeah, I can, yeah, I would definitely agree with that. Actually, it was funny, we, um, you know, periodically as part of the program that supports the, the student team projects, um, periodically we, we have these like ideation sessions where a student kind of comes and we have, you know, some expertise in the room and they say, well, I got this idea. What could I do to, you know, do it? Right. And, uh, you know, and, and we had this conversation with, with a student the other day. Um, and, you know, I'm like trying to explain to them, it's like, no, you want to write as little code as possible. Like you want to be trying to find some API or whatever yep. that will do as much of the work of your tool as you can get. And that, it's that glue that is your value. Right. Yep, yep. Uh, and, sure. uh, you know, and I think when you're, you know, doing a computer science degree or something, it's not obvious that that's what modern software development, yep. it, if not is, should be, you know. True. My my future wife, we're going to get married in, uh, in a month. Oh, uh, congratulations. Say, I, or almost like, congratulations. Yeah, or... Um, she's learning. She's learning coding. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah. And she, I thought you meant to put up with you. Uh, no, no. no I, but she, she's learning code and then yeah. she didn't get the API, all this whole API thing. And she said, like, is that, that's it? I mean, that's all I need to code? Just, right, the, right. just a wrapper around right. some API? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that, that's exactly. all you need to code. But, it, that, that, but it's not, it's it, it's one of those just, right? In the sense just, of, yeah, well. you know, <laughs> but you have to know the API exists. You have to know that what it does. You have to know that it's going to fulfill the goal that you yeah. have, right? And so, you know, it's like a lot of things where if you can, if you're a really serious expert, you just do this one little thing. There was actually a TikTok meme about this uh -huh. of like, okay. you know, yeah, I just charged you a thousand bucks to go fix your door, and all I did was hit it once with a hammer. And it, the thousand bucks is not the time it takes to hit it with the hammer; it's, it's knowing what to yeah. hit. Yeah. What to uh, yeah. Yeah. It, and that's it's really like uh, what I really like about yeah. modern software is that it's becoming more and more like that. I mean, yeah. it's always been a bit like that, but you had to do a lot more hanging of the door uh, than you yeah, than you do today. The wrapper matters. Yeah. The security, yeah. you know, uh, it, it really matters. So right. sure, there's an API, but how you wrap it up right. and glue it together. Our product is called Glue, by the way. That's, that's yeah, the reason. Well, right, right, I forgot yeah, about so, that. Yeah. So how you glue it together yeah. really matters, so. It's, uh, it's really important. Yeah, that's, oh. uh, that's something. There are trends, of course. I mean, this is one 
course. Right. Savage right. match. We we are so happy. I'm happy. I'm in the right place. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. I'm also uh, eagerly waiting for some for what is going to happen. Right. So, right. Right. As uh, yeah. That's that's I think what when you're seriously in the tech, you're kind of always are. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, I still but, like, uh, feel like a, the kid who installed. Linux from floppy disks. Yeah. Oh yeah. In and I finally, I was, I was trying to remember earlier. I blanked on Slackware, and I realized I was, it was my was first like, one. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, and zero point nine. You uh, remember yeah, when you had yeah. to compile the kernel with I N never, courses? I never had to compile it, um, but but I did have to be careful of the uh, monitor resolution so it wouldn't light the monitor right, on fire. Right, right, right. Uh, yeah, and uh, so Vincent Batts, who uh, I know Vincent Batts. Yeah. So That's you know, he was a Slackware maintainer. Yes, like, yes, uh, you amazing, know, top yes. level, it was hilarious. Um, but uh, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed our little uh, drive around Amsterdam. Although I think I think you you've seen it probably before. <laughs> yeah, we were uh, sorry, but it was a great time. Blast okay. from the past. Yeah. I mean, reminis uh, great things uh, like uh, like Slackware and Linux. Right, right. It's great. Uh, yeah, cool. Well, thank you so much. Thank you very much. And uh, back to Coopergon. Yeah, exactly.